It's true. There are some people who believe that we are indeed headed for a dystopian existence. And there are some that believe we are, in fact, already there, but just haven't acknowledged it fully yet. You're going to want to get really close and hold on tight as we're going deep into the rabbit hole tonight. So what exactly is a dystopian world, you may be asking? And how can it possibly exist in these modern times? And if we are indeed headed in that direction, how do we all come together and turn things around when there's so much planned division going on in the world today? Is it too late to save humanity from what some call the psychopathic authoritarian ruling class? that it would seem are set on calling the population through their many means of total control of what will be left of the human race should they have their way. A dystopian world? Are we there yet? These are just a few of the questions we'll explore on today's episode. But first, hey Dark Side crew, welcome back to the Dark Side of the Human Condition. I'm Freya, your host, And glad to say we're back. We took some time off to spend with fam and friends that we were missing during the quarantine lockdowns and did a complete overhaul on our studio. New equipment, new music, all new episodes, and some very special guests coming your way. Yes, we missed you too. If you're new here, we're glad you found us and welcome. Here on the dark side, we dive deep into the abyss in each episode And it's my hope that here you'll find some answers to many questions relating to that shadow side of our lives. What it is, and how do we learn to incorporate it into our lives on a level that we can not only understand it, acknowledge it, and even use it. Use these experiences in constructive ways to enhance our lives going forward. Remember, this material is not meant for everyone. So if you're not a critical thinker, easily triggered when someone speaks of things that you don't agree with, now's your time to go find your tribe elsewhere. For our like-minded peeps, I invite you to find your crew at our home on podbean.com or wherever you find your podcast fixes, as we're everywhere. And as always, for more info and to reach out to us, You can find us on our website at tdsothc.com. Let's explore together and find some of those elusive answers to some of our many dark human conditions and concerns. So with that, let's dive in. While doing my research, I found that according to the Merriam-Webster dictionary, dystopian means an imagined world or society in which people lead wretched, dehumanized, fearful lives. And according to Cambridge Dictionary, it's relating to a very bad and unfair society in which there is a lot of suffering, especially an imaginary society in the future. And if you ask me, and many other humans right now, I'd say it looks like we're going through that today, no? I believe it's never been more apparent than in recent times that the will of a few are crushing the lives of many with the help of the unending media fear porn, the never-ending red and false flags. And it would seem that the haves and the have-nots have begun to seriously set out to erase those in the middle, as in... Soon there will be no middle class. There will only be the uber-rich and the peasants who will do their bidding of the elite in order to remain a part of society, whatever that consists of, right? My question is, do we really want to live in that type of society anyway? And yes, it's true, there's always been an unfortunate divide in the classes and cultures from the very beginning of time. 
where the elite are at the top of the food chain. They are the kings of nations, the aristocrats, the corporate and political elite who make the rules, own more than they should of the world's resources, as in real estate, financial assets, etc. And then they hide behind their gated communities with hired security to protect them and their ill-gotten gains. Then there are those beneath them, the middle class, those who strive to make a better life for themselves and their families, who do well without the help of the system, as they educate themselves, work hard, and take advantage of their abilities to rise above the distractions and the noise and succeed to certain levels. They raise their children to be contributing members of society and, yes, provide a majority of the tax dollars to take care of the top and the bottom of the chain. And lastly, there is the lower class, the bottom of the food chain, or what used to be called the downtrodden. Those who were born into poverty, let's say, had less education and or opportunities or even motivation to rise above their circumstances and they're either just barely getting by on a daily basis or have accepted a life of governmental programs as in welfare assistance to basically exist in this life but never really getting a foothold on what would be considered a prosperous, decent life. Now don't get me wrong here as I'm not asserting that these people are not worthy of more from their lives because they are. I'm simply saying that there are many reasons why they have made a decision to allow the system to deceive and convince them that this is all they're worth and that there are very limited options for them. So at some point, they give up and make a choice to stay in that lane and do the best they can with what they've got. Generation after generation. So what does all of this have to do with a dystopian society, you may be wondering? Well, it would seem to many that it's the elitist of the world who have made sure to keep their status and power over societies through tactics such as constant societal divisions by race, financial status, religious sanctions, class warfare, constant state of fear of the unseen boogeyman with the never-ending condemnations of our human rights through corporate, religious, philosophical, technocratic, bureaucratic, reproductive authoritarian control that we have allowed. That is how they have always remained in power over the masses. It's only now that the people are starting to see the world as it truly is and who controls it. Some may be calling it the Great Awakening, and it's strange that it would really take a foothold in the year 2020, as in hindsight, right? You see, it really makes no difference to me what your political bent is, as it's not about the left or the right, or even if you find yourself somewhere in the middle. I like to refer to them as the fence sitters, those who make no real convictions to the betterment of humanity unless it fits their personal agendas. And some may argue that we are experiencing totalitarianism at this moment in time on our way to communism as we've given them total social control over our human existence through techniques such as thought police, censorship, constant surveillance, and even the cancel culture. I personally can't get on board with any of these tactics simply because I exist, and you do too. You can't be in two places at the same time, so they tell me. You're either on the right side of history or you're not. There is no other option. 
It figures prominently in the famous dystopian novel written by George Orwell, written in 1948, called 1984. Was he a time traveler? Was his novel a foretelling of the future to come? I remember having to read this novel in my English Lit class in high school and was terrified. So much so that I was literally traumatized by the mere thought of this scenario becoming reality. And my dad said to me that I may not live long enough to see this type of society happen, but there was a possibility that my future children or their children may have to rise against it. And here we are. And I'm still here. It was not the answer that I wanted to hear, but it was the one that I needed to hear, as I believe it was then that my eyes began to slowly open to what was happening and had been going on for many decades, if not hundreds of years, centuries. My dad was a very wise man and was born just before World War II, and so one could say he was raised at a time of major world instability, fear, chaos, insecurities. He eventually joined the military as a young man and began to understand just how corrupt the world really can be at this time, at its core. He began to investigate exactly how the world was operating and who was in charge of all of this insanity we've been going through for probably thousands of years. One thing he said to me was, to never stop learning, and he never did until he was gone. He left with me some very valuable insights and lessons to pass along, and maybe, just maybe, that's why I'm here today. He was one of those inquisitive minds that always needed to know how or why something is the way it is. I remember telling him that, you know, in that conversation that I wished when he passed away that we would be at a point where they could transfer his brain into my head as he literally knew more than I could ever hope to know about so many topics. He said, and I quote, then you wouldn't be you and the world would be at a great loss brings tears to my eyes when I think about all the amazing conversations we had over the years. And we'll go through some of those in future episodes, I promise. But for now, back to our topic. You see, the more the rulers keep the people around the world fighting amongst ourselves, fighting for our human rights to live free, unencumbered by their ruthless laws and fighting for our basic human dignities, the more we as a society fall deeper into chaos and confusion and eventually a truly unavoidable dystopian existence. We are in fact under a constant barrage of programming through dark novels, graphic films, violent video games that tend to contain many of the same narrative elements of these dystopian societies engaged in endless wars characterized by extreme social and economic class divides, oppression, mass poverty, environmental devastation, extreme anarchy, and loss of individuality, and the never-ending fear of doom and gloom scenarios. Have you noticed the speeches coming from this administration on a daily basis? Like it's hopeless and we're all doomed to despair if we don't follow the rules set forth by those in charge who don't even pretend to follow their own rules. Have you ever felt so hated by those who are supposed to be protecting us? I've heard there's an unwritten code that these psychopathic Satanists have to tell you in one way or another what they are planning to do and mostly through many platforms of media 
and that if we collectively do not resist, we have consented and allowed it to happen. Think about that for a minute. So what are some of the characteristics of a dystopian society, you ask? Well, it may be with our information and our independence as a free society being controlled and restricted by those in power, it may be a leader or a figurehead, social influencer, Hollywood actor, followed blindly by the masses of society. I swear, ever since social media became a thing, it's like everyone thinks the world needs to hear their every thought on every topic especially politics which they could care less about until it became trendy to spew their opinions at the award you know their award shows no wonder the ratings have tanked over the years on these events um let me say this as clear as possible hollywood elitist no one cares about your fake concerns as it's just virtue signaling rants and people see it all too clearly now another characteristic is that there's a feeling or an understanding that one is always being watched with all the surveillance cameras everywhere our smart devices listening in and maybe even watching us without us being aware A feeling of nothing we can do about it because it is the way it is. We have no control over the controllers. We feel powerless to change situations because that's the message they bring. And unfortunately, many still believe it. Another way is propaganda. It's another form that they use disguised as the news or mainstream narrative. Citizens of the community or nations live in a state of constant fear, as if waiting for the other shoe to drop, not knowing what horrible thing is going to happen next. And the news is always there to tell us what we should believe, think, and do. Another form is dehumanization. And only the elite as a collective is important. You as an individual and me are irrelevant. Our input input is not required nor valuable nor validated to the elite or their plans for our enslavement. And talking about the environment, it's used as a weapon against the people, as a way to extort more land and monetary gain from the people, but it's typically destroyed and the blame is put on society as a form of gaslighting the people. The more they have many of us confused as to who is destroying the planet, the more we feel guilty and that we as a society are responsible for her demise and that we must give up more and more of our money and our rights to exist in their world. When in fact it's the rulers of the world who have raped, robbed, and pillaged the earth for centuries for their gain and only their needs. Yet another characteristic of the dystopian society is conformity. This may possibly be valued above almost everything else by the oligarchs. What we are experiencing in this moment in time where the division between the juiced and unjuiced, the muzzled and the unmuzzled has become the new dividing line between those who just want to go along to get along, those who believe If we all just do as they say, we can get our lives back. Let me say this. That's never going to happen if you keep complying with the insanity. They insist that for those who choose 
for many valid reasons, not to conform to the narrative, that if you don't get the Jews, you want to kill grandma. It's like when the Jews had to wear the yellow star in World War II. It separated them from society. And it was all by design to divide and conquer, not only physically, but mentally. Reminds me of these passports they're trying to bring about. I, for one, will only have my international travel passport. And if not getting on another plane means I can't travel abroad ever again, so be it. I guess I'll just keep traveling inside my homeland because there's so much of my beautiful country that I have yet to explore. I've been thinking about buying a van this past year and traveling and working from the road, so who knows? I am the proverbial free spirit. And maybe it's time to truly spread my wings and fly. Like my father before me, I have personally never been a conformist. And I don't see it happening anytime soon in my future. As in, two plus two is four. Always has been. Always will be. And for those of you who read the book, you get it. (laughs) To me, conformity has always meant the loss of true freedom. Independent thinking. The willingness to be governed by another who may or may not know what is best for me. To conform gives away our personal power. To decide what is or isn't what's needed, you know, for us in our own situations. How did we get to a place where to express your individuality is only okay if it's following the equity narrative? If not, If you dare step outside the box that they have tried to keep us in, you can be assured of being looked at as an abhorrent danger to society. As we are indoctrinated from a very young age to shame anyone who does not follow the societal norms. And we should not associate with people who speak out against the government or any single policy because they are a danger to the collective and they must be a conspiracy theorist. I call it being a conspiracy realist. At some point, I fully expect that this truth cast will be abolished by the powers that be and I'm okay with that. Because as I've said before, you can't cancel me as long as I have a breath left and a mind to think and eyes to see. I exist to bring the truth one more time. Funny how many of those theories that have been shown to be an actual conspiracy reality over the years and as of late. You see, society as a whole gives the illusion of perfection the way things ought to be. For those who are awake, not woke, but awake at this moment in time, it's like we're living in two very different realities. And what I mean by that is that on one hand, we can see the truth about what is really happening in this world. And as hard as it may be, we do not look away. And then we see the side where people are going about their daily lives in a form of either complete denial of the truth or what is happening around them or they just don't want to see it because then they'd have to acknowledge it and actually do something about it. For many, it's easier to just go along to get along and don't rock the boat as they convince themselves that everything is okay and we're getting back to normal. Whatever that was, right? I do believe that we humans are experiencing it's truly corruption beyond all comprehension at the moment. Or is it? 
Could it be what some believe is a world that has been under a spell of evil that has been here since the beginning of time? But it is only now that we can see that the veil has been lifted, that we as humans have been lied to about so many things, important things, that it's hard to differentiate between what's true and what's not. Talk about a real mind fuck, right? My instinct and intuition have always been on point. And although sometimes being human, I have gone against them. And I live to regret some of them later. You know, some of those choices that I would make. I don't anymore. If something doesn't feel right, I guarantee you it isn't. We have been taught not to trust ourselves. That someone of fake authority always knows what's best for us. They don't. I believe our instincts and our intuition is primal and is what has kept humans on this earth for probably thousands of years, right? I mean, they tell us we've been around longer, but who really knows? But now it would seem that if the rumors are true regarding the contents of the juice, that may be coming to a swift end. How have we let this happen? That's all I keep asking myself. How has humanity come this far? And now we may be facing some really tough realities that our time as an organic human, you know, as organic human beings, it may be ending. Someone say it isn't so. So now that we have a better understanding of what a dystopian society looks like, what about a utopian world? Well, by definition, it doesn't exist. The word coined by writer Thomas More in 1516 is derived from a Greek word meaning no place. Although the word utopia was first originated in the literary works of the first century B.C., classical Greek philosopher and mathematician Plato created from the Greek words EU meaning good OU meaning no and topos meaning place utopia represented an unattainable perfect society or community in which social, economic and environmental scientific conditions were ideal. The word literally means non-existent society when described in considerable detail. Utopian societies are often characterized by benevolent governments that ensure the safety and general welfare of its citizens. Society and its institutions treat all of its citizens equally and with dignity. Citizens live in a safety without fear. I believe humans have never lived in this type of society and at this point we may never achieve this because utopias are idealized visions of a perfect society. So if a utopian society is an ideal society that does not really exist, can we ever achieve this? Given the nature of man and his desire to rule over humanity by coercion or by force, the problem is when imperfect humans attempt perfectibility, personal, political, economic, and social, we fail. And why do we fail? Because in order to have a perfect society, We would have to have the ability to maintain critical thinking, the ability to put aside our differences on all levels without the need for confrontations, the abolishment of people needing to let their egos run their lives and all of humanity. 
We would have to live in a world free of jealousies, free of fear, embrace personal freedoms that don't inflict our personal desires on the rest of society, especially when others may oppose our intentions, whether or not we feel it's in their best interest. People need to be free, free to be. To truly live in a dystopian, utopian world, not dystopian. To truly live in a utopian world, we would live in a life much like a Buddhist. In that we do no harm to another person, animal, or even a bug. I have personally lived the life of the Buddhist mind since the late 90s. And in a future episode, we'll dig a little deeper into the Buddhist mind concept. I feel that, unfortunately, this type of society has never really existed on a mass scale and most likely never will, as utopianisms are those ideas put into practice. It's not a hard thing to do from a personal perspective, but sometimes your environment will test you, that's true. But it is a daily personal choice to stay connected to your source of intentions. As I'd stated in a previous episode, I'm not a religious person for so many reasons, but I am truly a spiritual being. And my Zen master once said that everything we do in this life comes down to our intentions. Whether we acknowledge them or not, Although we may never experience a utopian type of world on a mass scale, I do believe that we can create that type of world in our personal lives on a daily basis. How? Well, unfortunately we have to do a whole lot of living to get to the point where we understand a whole lot of things about our world and our fellow inhabitants, our brothers and our sisters. Meaning we don't just arrive on this earth already knowing what we need or want out of this life. It takes a long time, unfortunately, to go through the trials and errors to come to some real conclusions about what we need or want for our lives and those around us. But once we get to that point of no return, now or never kind of thinking... Our entire life can change in an instant. From the clothes we wear, the food we ingest, the music we listen to or create. Side note, I love music. Love, love, love music. And life would suck without it. But I digress. (laughs) The people we allow to remain in our tribe. The work we choose to do. Making our residence as serene as possible. That is our little space in the world where we can turn off the world, the noise, if you will, and recharge. And one of the most important, I believe, is the personal bonds with our relationships we have with others. As I believe our time here on earth is but a blink of an eye. And we spend far too much time on things and people that at the end of the day we're not worth our energy and everything is energy and those things are people that don't resonate with our energies are but merely sidelines or distractions keeping us from truly discovering our path we are all here for a reason and especially now This very moment in time is vital to the continuation of humanity. And I, for one, feel that we are all warriors for Mother Earth and her children. If we don't get this right, and I mean right now, it's game over. A philosopher, William Semeca, once said, and I quote, Utopianism was a common type of thinking at the dawn of human civilization, 
we find utopian beliefs in the oldest religious imaginations appear regularly in the neighborhood of ancient yet pre-philosophical views on the causes and meaning of natural events. The purpose of creation, the path of good and evil, happiness and misfortune, fairy tales and legends, later inspired by poetry and philosophy. The underlying motives on which utopian literature is built are as old as the entire historical epic of humanity in human history. End quote. That should have been our quote of the day, but it's not. (laughs) If anything has become apparent to me over the past two years, it's that people have been conditioned to live in fear. And fear is a great influencer or motivator. It can crush your spirit. Or it can cause you to stand tall and fight like you never imagined you could. Some people you thought you could count on may have shown you their true colors. Some people you thought were your friends or loved ones may have deserted you in your time of need. Some people you thought were your friends may have abandoned you simply because you didn't agree with them on certain things. I have definitely lost a couple of people that I'd known for several years and It was disturbing to say the least because it was all over politics. I mean, really? If this has been part of your experience, then it may just confirm that these people were never really there for you in the first place. Not really. They're still asleep and they're comfortable in their slumber. They get angry when anyone tries to bring them to the truth. You may call them fair weather friends, family, etc. But in the end, I choose to let them go with peace. I'm a major player in the karma realm, so there's that. (laughs) I no longer feel the need or the desire to force any situation because I feel if things or relationships are meant for me in this lifetime they will appear and they will stay they will be connected through the heart through this and many lifetimes without fail it's okay to let people or things go find peace in knowing that they were part of your existence for a reason and once you figure out what that was set it or set them free with love you see I'm the kind of person that maintains a very small circle or tribe if you will because this is my tribe the fact that not everyone has your best interest at heart not everyone is meant to be in your life for the long haul Not everyone has a compassionate heart or the ability to let you live your life as you see fit. Free of judgments, criticisms, need to control you and what they want or need you to be for them. Because it's about them, not you. I've heard it said that people come into our lives not for, you know, not by chance, but for a reason. They may be bringing us a lesson that we need to experience and grow from, be it a good or bad experience, or we are in their lives as the teacher at that moment, and when the lesson is over, they recede into the past, a memory. Make sense? So knowing what we are facing at this particular moment in time can we do on a personal level to try and ward off the tyrannies that surround us right now I'll give you a few thoughts on what keeps me going forward day to day one is I don't let fear control me 
I maintain that I do what I want, when I want, where I want, and with whom I want. There is no one person on this earth that is above me, nor has the authority to govern me. I don't care what title they give themselves. That has always been my stance. And I'm not about to start changing it anytime soon. Friends laugh and say that I'll be one of the first residents at the camp. And I laugh back and say, yeah, but I'll be the one putting together the escape plan who's with me. Number two, I surround myself with like-minded people who get it, who understand that not everyone is going to make it through this crazy world unscathed, and that's okay. It's all right. Number three, I continue to educate myself on what's really happening in this world and avoid the lamestream narrative like the plague. Yet I pay attention to what they're putting out there as information is power and can always be used to our benefit. And number four, always be steps ahead of the crowd as in be prepared for just about anything to happen on any given day. Take care of you and yours primarily and remind yourself not to sweat the small stuff. Because none of us are getting out of this life alive anyway. But the time that we are here, we have a responsibility to preserve this world and our way of living for future generations as a free and sovereign people. Number five, surround yourself with people who know you and you trust with your life. Because someday you may find yourself in a position where that may be the case. You know by now who they are. Get involved in your local community, school boards. Even if you don't have kids in school, your local election committees or community projects. Stay involved. Number six, do you. What I mean by that is don't stop living your life as all of this craziness is going to continue as it always has and you must not let others take your sanity, your peace of mind, your happiness, and your soul. Don't stop investing in you. Number seven, take care of your health as this is not the time to find yourself in the hands of the medical system. Eat organic as much as possible. Meditate, do some yoga work out and this next one is a little difficult for many of us who find ourselves single at this crazy moment but find a great life partner if you're single as there's nothing better than sharing all of the good and yes even the bad with your other half they're out there I promise and waiting for you to find them and bring them home. And if you have a life partner, focus all your energy and intentions on that relationship as we get back what we invest in our meaningful connections. Rebuild those important relationships that you may have left on the back burner. But only if there's something still there worth your energy and time. And number eight, last but not least, every day do one thing. This change can only occur when we care enough to say enough is enough and commit to making the changes that need to be made. As I've said before, no one is coming to save us. As the Buddha said, we need to be the change that we want to see in this world. As our children and their children are depending on us literally I'm sure there's so much more that can be added to that list but it's a good place to start as I hear many people say what can I do I'm only one person and I say it only begins with one person begins and ends with just one person 
Look around at the world and all of the just one persons rising up together against the tyrannies, standing up for freedom for the whole world. I'm a firm believer that there's something everyone can do, even if it's just speaking your truth. I saw a meme a while back of a lion and it said, stand for truth, even if it means you're standing alone. Many days it may really seem that way, but I promise you, that's not the case. You're not alone. We're here. So as we wrap up another episode today, we've come to my favorite part, the quote of the day. The dark mirror of dystopian fiction functions as a deterrent, a warning, that we should not allow the still curable illness of our present world turn into the abhorrent pathologies of the world of the future by Erica Gottlieb. Just a quick note, as promised, we'll be having a very special guest coming to enlighten us in just the next few days. So stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this show. Check out our website for more details soon. And as we come to the end of the show today, I hope you that I've enticed your mind just a little bit. Maybe you're asking yourself a few new questions or maybe found an answer to some. I'd love to hear your thoughts as to what you may have received out of today's show, what dark areas you may like to explore here on future episodes. And I look forward to diving deep into many more topics with you and dissecting many more fascinating human experiences. For more info, again, check out our site, tdsothc.com. If you like what we're bringing to you, consider supporting the show on patreon.com. And as always, remember to hit that subscribe button on your way out so you'll get notified of our new episodes. And remember, if today has you feeling anxious, confused, triggered, or even a little bit weary, take a moment right now and quiet your mind and just breathe. Let go of all distractions. Embrace your mindfulness. Focus your intentions on what you really want. Clarify and let go of that which no longer serves you. Remember your determination is your power and your peace to realize your true purpose as these brief but mindful moments can allow a new path to arise. So till next time, walk in the light on the dark side right here where your vibe attracts your tribe.